Hey, so today I'm right in the middle of the launch of one of my new products, which is going to be coming out, uh, which I'm calling Transformation Templates. Um, I'm super excited about it, so we're, I'm about to share all of the templates that I use uh, whenever I go into a business transformation. Uh, all of the tools, all of the spreadsheets, the way I collect information, we're putting that all into one tool set and putting it into a spot where um, you'll all have access to it. So really, really exciting. And uh, I wanted to just pick up on something that uh, one of the templates in specifically addresses. So there's this tendency when we get into change programs to say, right, I've been put in place here to make a change. And it's about getting from where I am today to something that looks significantly different to, to what we're doing. And often we come up against resistance and, um, you know, people like the familiar, we talk about people not wanting to change, um, you know, getting through all that motivation stuff. And sometimes it can be quite easy to get caught up in our own, um, I guess, our own journey and our own story. And so we start pushing through these changes. Um, and we, we can get to the point where we actually start to say no to a lot of things. And it, it, it becomes uh, what I would describe as disrespectful um, of the current way of working or the current operations because we can see through it and we can see a better path and so why would you continue doing what you're doing if you can see this utopia in the future um, and so it can be easy to slip into that space of I guess um, playing down what we've got that's existing and I wanted to pick up on that and highlight that in any change program uh, we must come at this from a place of respect for the old these ways of working came about because we were trying to solve a problem. Somebody probably put them in for a really good reason. That strange process where we double, triple, quadruple check something was probably put in place for a good reason at some point. And so when we then go to start unpicking and undoing this and we start impacting the lives of our colleagues and, and our team members, and it's really important that we come to it with a place of respect. So understanding that these things may have been put in place for a very, very good reason, but actually we're going to move to something that's going to be a whole heap better. And so one of the tools that I use over and over and again is this, um, this idea of a give and take planner. So whilst we're taking away something, we're changing the current way of working, what's the give back? Uh, and this became really apparent to me with a um, executive coming onto a floor of 200 engineers that were in the middle of a large agile uh, program. So this team built software that moved from wanting to build big projects that lasted three to four years and we'd flipped it to fortnightly ways of working and trying to get software out the door much more quickly and this idea of feedback loops and responsiveness. And in that process, we had dropped a lot of the traditional project management tools, including schedules. And so this executive arrived on the floor and we walked him around. And I remember him saying to me, but how the hell do I know what's going on when I don't have a schedule? How do I, how do I get, like, this is all great. I see people collaborating. I see a lot of energy. Fantastic. But I've got no idea where we're at. And it was this moment for me where I realized that just because we didn't produce a Gantt chart uh, anymore, um, and, and we as a team had got to this place of Gantt charts are bad, we don't do them, that didn't take away from the fact that somebody still needed to understand where we were up to. Help me understand progress. Am I heading in the right direction? Is it meaningful? When are we going to be done? These questions don't, didn't go away. And so it was a real joy to be able to take this person to uh, one of our big visual work boards um, where we had a whole bunch of post-it notes and, um, and colored cards and things up on the wall displaying, I guess, like a dashboard, a physical dashboard of where the team was at. And I talked them through um, the tool that we were using instead of the Gantt chart, which was called a burn-up chart. And I took them through and, and taught them how to read these particular tools and explained the, the trend line and, and where finish happened and those sorts of things. And by the end of it, he was really comfortable that he could come back into that space and get the answers that he was looking for. Uh, but that example really crystallized for me. Here's someone who has a problem to solve. They've asked this team to go away and carry out some work. And then in the process of changing our work method, 
all of a sudden he's lost all of those tools that he was expecting to be able to understand whether or not he was making meaningful progress. And so turning around to him and saying, well, that's not the way we do things anymore, was actually the same behavior we were trying to get away from. And so instead, having respect for the old, we understand that there, just because we don't use that tool anymore doesn't take away from the fact that you still have a problem or, a, um, or an insight that you're looking for. And actually, here's the give back. Here's the way that you get that information in the new way of working. Here's how you understand what you're looking for um, and potentially in a much better way than the previous tool, we hope. That's why we're changing, right? So I'll leave that one with you. I'm going to go back to some video recording and um, getting these templates up online, but I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you again next week.